Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 117, last meeting of 2016. It's going to be a quick one. Uh, as always, we're recording this for those people that aren't able to be with us right here, right now, which is quite a few people given probably the holidays are upon us. Uh, let's move into the agenda. As promised, it's going to be a short one. We're just going to do triage. Then we're going to get out of here and you guys can get back to your holiday shopping or you know just hanging out with family or uh, I guess for you that are working, you can go back to work. Uh, you're welcome. Mm, whatever. All right, let's go to triage. Let's get this done. Bob, you ready? I am ready. Uh, not too many. So let's go ahead and get started. Right, IS failed when setting web config identity. Hmm. All right. Do we know what this error is? Anybody off the top of their head? E fail? Oh, some better not. Uh, I think what the invalid parameter. Invalid parameter. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Isn't it? Maybe. If only there were websites that we could go to. Error code. Yeah, answer. very good, Bob. Error and valid yeah. parameter. All right. So, um, hmm. So that means that we're not validating something. Um, you know, or some variable sneaking through, probably. Um, Identity and user attributes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this sample here. Yes. There are three app pools. And we don't tell which one failed. Oh, failed to commit the IS config changes. That's just very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, bummer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'd have. Yeah, someone's got to dig into that. Um, he doesn't. S he an existing Wix installer. I'm trying to do a probably do an, a major upgrade. Change the identity of our web app pools. Doesn't say that this worked in an older version. Uh, yeah, it looks like a bug and probably should be fixed in some Wix version. That's pretty precise. Uh, someone's got to dig into this, try to yeah. reproduce it. So, Identity and user attributes from the app pool. But there's three app pools. The error does not happen if I remove the identity from the app. Well, whichever one. Oh, I guess only one of them has identity and user. All right, fine. Yeah, that's just useless from IIS when it just doesn't work. And web app pools are the one thing you would use this custom action for. Unlike other things where you'd be like, no, just go right to web config. This is actually the way you set them up. Uh, okay, yeah, someone's got to dig into it. Uh, 3x and someone can look at it. That makes sense. be a breaking change. But uh, I've lost my mouse cursor. Oh, it's all the way up there. Okay. Cab files. 150. Wait, you guys are having a discussion about this. Yes, lots of discussion. Bug or not supported. All files have been in Wix libs. All cab files were built as expected. The MSI database, which Gentlight takes all the files again and compresses them in the MSI database. To solve this, I use Wix drivers from the Wix libs and built them. I mean, however, now everything's so. Why did binary Wix libs change anything? Well, and and I, I I was trying to get through this that that you know it's unlikely you're going to be able to build an MSI with embedded cabs, you know, approaching a two gig limit. Um, so. The, the references to compresses them in the MSI databases, you know, yeah, that that seems likely to me. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what Wixlibs have to do with it. And the problem is, so there's just some limit that we have to track, or is it that he's trying to create an MSI file that's greater than two gigabytes by shoving cabs into it? That I, I can't explain. You know, there's no problem building 
uh, you know, two gigs worth of cabs, that works. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as they're you know external, embedded, yeah, no, uh, I, you know, if you were to tell me that MSI can't handle putting you know even like 1.5 gigs worth of cabs inside an MSI, I would go, I'm not surprised, because you know it's document. You know. Uh, let's let's toss it in a four thing and see if we can't create a test for it. But I don't think we're going to do anything in three for this. If yeah, if anything, it's probably too low level. Yeah. All right, we'll toss it in four. Toss it in four. We'll just take a quick look at it and see if we can reproduce a quick thing. Especially yeah. since a lot of that has changed. So binary Wix libs and all. Also true. Yeah. Project outputs and Wix prod are not available to other projects. Right. This is fixed in four. And we're not going to do major surgery to the Wix branches for this in three. Right. It's not worth it. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, I, this is resolved in four. So, um, I can do this one. I will resolve this in four. All I right. I need to do that. Oh, come on. There it is. A little handy dandy notepad, real quick. Big black screen on top of all of you. All right, there we go. All right, carrying on. Wix proj item groups with environment variables will not load in 2015. I guess that's possible. It's yeah, it's a limitation of MPF proj ah. uh, from back in the day. Cool. So let's res put that in this and what put a mat on it because I'm not really interested in fixing MPF proj unless a newer one fixes it. Right, that I don't know. Um, I believe someone was looking at this. Um, okay. Wix devs or Wix users. Someone was asking about building votive. Ah, okay. Um, all right, so I don't think we would take it in three, so we can put it in four and have someone look at upgrading MPF to see if that fixes it. Because I'm certain the MPF we're using is ancient. It is. So... Cool. Performance counters, multi-instance, or average-based counters are not created properly with heat. Okay. And he sent a pull request for this. Uh, two. Yep. Two. One for three and one for four. No. No. Oh. Which we need to. Send. Yeah. So he needs to go to four first. And then three. Would we take it in three? I don't think it'll break anything. It should fix a problem, not break something. <laughs> I didn't even know we had it. So um, all sorts of hidden stuff in heat. Uh, yeah, I'm fine taking it. I, you know, absolute right. worst case, it affects performance category harvesting. Right. Cool. And I think that's the bug. So let's tell them to create the thing in four and... We'll go from there. Cool. Sweet. Anything else people want to talk about? Jacob, you're here. Sean, you've been nice and quiet in the corner, as as it's not terribly unusual. Um, things people want to talk about this last day of the year before we get into the new year and start talking about New Year's resolutions and things that we're going to do bright and shiny for 2017. Um, right now, I'm just trying to close out 2016 without going thud. Uh, Jacob's typing something. Got to fill the space. Sean, are you excited for the new year? Yeah. It'll be nice <laughs> for 2016 to be over. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at. Being on a mobile in a meeting sucks. Oh, sorry. Well, at least you can watch the YouTube thing later. Uh, although I don't think this is going to go down as our most exciting meeting in history. Um, our last couple have actually been pretty quiet um, but so are the bugs and things like that. I think the big thing that we're probably looking at is the Visual Studio 2017 support. Uh, I think that's probably the big thing to discuss next year. Um, I know there's been a, a whip about how to do that, or at least how to talk to Visual Studio 2017. So that I haven't had a chance to review yet, um, but we need to go through. Yeah, there's some issues. There's some issues we're going to have there. Um, yeah, it, we should probably talk about that because one of the interesting things about about Visual Studio 2017 compared to the others 
is that they explicitly wanted to maintain uh, binary ABI compatibility um, with hmm. Visual Studio 2015. Okay. So one of the you know one of the things we have done in the past, as part of the you know, supporting a new version of Visual Studio, is building the native SDK libraries with each version of Visual Studio, mm -hmm. which is something theoretically we don't have to do anymore, or rather for 2017 we don't have to do. So we just have to update some manifest stuff, figure out whatever the heck it takes to find this silly thing, and then maybe work can be done with it without having to do a whole rebuild another version of Votive kind of thing? Well, yeah, that's, that's the theory. So Votive is, Votive is one thing. That's what, you know, it's probably the most visible thing. Uh, the building width is the other. Um, and we should, you know, maybe talk about it. Um, you know, the, the big issue with Visual Studio 2017 is that it's, you know, no longer a singleton. Theoretically, you can install, you know, multiple versions and they can go to random directories and, uh, you know, so finding Visual Studio is now a big issue, um, both for building and for um, and for installing Votive. So. All right. Jacob, no, there's no Azure build template because you have to install. I mean, it's mostly about installing just a bunch of Visual Studios. It's not hard. You just have to install a bunch of Visual Studios. So, um, Which isn't necessarily easy. Yeah, it's just time consuming. So setting up a new Wix build machine isn't hard. It's just it takes a long time. It takes <laughs> two days or something like that. So um, anyway. It's not hard. And you don't even, like, and Bob says that you don't need all of them to, to build votives, so you only need the one that you care about, presumably. Uh, well, yeah, it's a little complicated doing a, uh, I, I haven't done it in a while because I use, you know, I have Visual Studio 2010 installed, so, uh, you know, yes. theoretically. Um, but you can't build a full uh, release version of Wix without having all versions of Visual Studio. Correct. So, so, Jacob, I don't know what you mean by verify. You mean you want to automate the testing of Votive inside Visual Studio? That's a lot of UI stuff. No, I mean, I don't know. I don't do a lot of work in Votive, so <laughs> I don't do any work in Votive. So I haven't done any work myself to automate the create the the processing of it. To verify that the install works on all the support IDs. Uh well I have all the IDs installed, so that's how I kind of do it. Although I think, you know, we should talk about when do we drop support for Visual Studio twenty ten. Right. And does that cut off an interesting tail for Wix um F functionality and things like that. Uh because 2010 is less like the other ones, as I understand it. Um, 2012 is more like 2015. It would it would help with with some of the voted stuff. Right. Um, you know, if we go to 2012 and later we have V6s. Ah, right. On the other hand, you then start to wonder: Well, if you're willing to drop 2010, how many versions do we need to support? Three? Is twenty is twenty twelve interesting anymore? I have no idea. Um, yeah, you know, the theory my theory was that twenty Visual Studio twenty ten was going to be the XP of Visual Studio. A lot of people would stick on it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you were, you know, willing to to move beyond twenty ten, you probably kept up a little bit more. Yeah, you know, maybe you're not on the latest, but you're on the latest but one. I see. So it's twenty twelve interesting. And then you get into 2017, you go, wait, we have 2017, 2015, 2013, 2012, 2010. That's five versions of Visual Studio. That's a lot. Oh, there's 20. Oh, I forgot about 2013. Yeah. Right. I forgot about that fast one. All right. Well, right. maybe these are things we should talk about when we talk about the next year about what we're going to do about Visual Studio 2017. Yep. Because I think it, well, it'll be 2017, and I think it's probably time for us to get to a place where we uh, decide what we're going to do because that's the only thing holding up Visual, uh, Wix 3.11. So uh, that's true. Well, any other issues we want to you know, sneak in as well? But 
Yeah. That's the big one. It's the big one. So. All right. Um, all right. Well, I think we'll have a topic for next year. Oh, quick question for those people here. Do we want to meet on the 3rd? Seems like most people are back at work. That would be two weeks from now. That would keep our normal cadence. Um, but, you know, some people aren't around. Uh, what do we think about the 3rd? I think if Jacob says yes and Sean says yes, we're in. Uh, so excited, Sean. <laughs> Always so excited. Jacob is booked. Um, so do we want to take a... Well, you know, the three of us will be here. We'll we'll roll. Even if we if we don't have anybody else, we'll come up with uh, just a triage, and then we'll save the agenda for two weeks after that. Um, but we'll just keep going. Um, maybe John will show up. We'll see what happens. Um, but we'll just... So the cases people are off this week, so... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we will adjust our uh, conversation based on the number of people that show up on the 3rd, but we will have a meeting on the 3rd, if nothing else, to do triage, which may be really light. So it may be a, the shortest meeting ever if people really do take the holidays off, but who knows what will happen. Um, so I think until then, uh, we're good here. Uh, all of you have a wonderful set of holidays coming up, it's, and uh, enjoy your time with family, and generally just you know take it easier. That's what we're trying to do here. All right. You guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.